and welcome to this new lecture entitled Culture. So today we'll try to define what culture is. Culture, as you can guess, is a very fundamental concept in anthropology. Uh, we use it all the time. It's a branch, uh, sub-branch of anthropology. Remember the four subfields. So culture is one of them, cultural anthropology. And in this course, I told you, we will talk more about cultural anthropology than any other subfields. So that's the reason why we need to define what culture is. So let's start and uh, let's review what uh, could be. So what is culture? It is difficult for us to define culture. It's like the fish in the water. The fish doesn't know that what the water is because the water is everywhere. And that's exactly the same for us with culture. Culture is everywhere. Culture surrounds us. Since we were born, we are used to it. We've learned it through our family and friends and relatives and so on. And it's everywhere in our life. So it is difficult exactly to name it. In this chapter, we will try to give a definition of culture. We will try to see how culture is in influencing our life. And by the end of the chapter, we will also uh, define culture by um, give a definition of culture from an anthropological perspective. How did anthropologists define culture at different time? So look at this picture here. In this picture, we can see some people eating. So what do you think about eating? Is eating natural or is it cultural? That's a big question, right? Because it's something we do every day. So is it natural or cultural? Well, I'm sure you have guessed that from behind your screen. Um, Eating is a biological need. We all know that if we don't eat at some point, we will die. So we need to eat. It's a fundamental biological need. However, the way we do it, the way we're eating is cultural. All right. So if you look at this picture, yes, it's, it represents people who are eating, but the way they are doing it is cultural because depending on your culture, you won't eat in the same way. For example, here where I live in the Middle East, it's pretty accepted to eat uh, with your hands, just like in India, like in the picture. In some part of the world, you need uh, to use chopsticks, for example, in a lot of different countries in Asia. So depending on where you are, the way you will eat would be different. Are you gonna eat on the floor or sitting at the, um, on the, at the table um, or standing up? This is also cultural, all right? So how you eat, what you eat, when you eat, it's shaped by culture. And how many times a day you eat? In some cultures, um, there are three main meals. In others, it's only two. Um, and you also have cultures with four accepted meals. So it, it really depends. It is again um, cultural. It's a social urge, all right? So food, it's something that is almost always shared. People eat together, meal times are even when the whole family or settlement or village comes together. And food is also an occasion for sharing for distributing and giving. This is, you know, a way um, to transmit also from parents to children. Um, it's also what we eat. And of course, uh, the way we cook as well is um, part of the culture. Uh, if you think of different examples, if you think, for example, of the tea ceremony in Japan, you know, it's very uh, well organized and structured. So this shows how cultural it is. If you think of uh, the different food etiquettes, that's what I'm going to show you now. 
as you can see here in these two pictures um, there is an example of different two different uh, cultures a Korean one and um, the other one we can say American or more broadly uh, Western so in the first uh, picture on the left side as you can see Asian dining etiquette so for example here in Korea uh, it would not be accepted or it would be considered to be rude to um, start to eat before the older person at the table maybe it's the same in your culture because it's something that is also common in other uh, cultures uh, here for example we can see also that uh, people should not reach um, across the table for a distant foot and uh, should not use their hands to pick food all right so this is typical uh, to the korean and i would say south korean culture now and they use chopsticks right or they can use a spoon also um, now here you have an example on the right side the purple image you have an example of a formal western um, dinner like for example in this one Thanksgiving so when you know we're celebrating a special occasion so here as you can see there are many tools to eat we can see forks but different types of forks knives different types of knives different glasses and different spoons and so on so here depending on what you will eat you will use a specific fork and a specific knife for example for the salad the fish or the main course the dinner all right and there's also a fork for the dessert and the way it is you know organized on the table it says also a lot about the culture so this is another example on how food could be um, cultural Now that we have discussed this example, let's try to define what culture is. So if you think of culture, we can see that it is a system of what? Of knowledge first, right? Things that we know about something, so knowledge. Then it's also somehow beliefs. So we share some beliefs with people. And those beliefs, those knowledge, would then uh, lead us to behave in a certain way. So it's also patterns of behavior. And then of course, we have some specific artifacts that are, that are attached to that. I just talk about spoon and knife and fork and glass. This could be considered as act, artifacts, right? That are directly related to our culture. And then institutions. So institution that would promote and that would also um, teach us how to behave. And when I'm talking about institutions, I do not mean only official institutions, but all type of institution. For example, hospitals. When you go to a hospital, it is a way, a cultural way to treat uh, disease and illness, illnesses. So here, um, the culture that we have, it's like a guide, it's like a manual for understanding interaction with people, how we should behave and the world around us, right? And it includes some shared norms, some values, some symbols and some kind of maps of reality that we share with people. So our culture it's something that we have learned, something that is dynamic, something that, um, you know, it's claimed by a group of people. It is contested. Okay, so try to remember those um, key terms here that are highlighted in different colors. So system of knowledge, beliefs, patterns of behavior, artifacts, and finally institution. Now let's continue to, to define culture. Culture is also, um, has also different characteristics or components, right? So first, 
culture is learned. It's transmitted. Sorry, I forgot the letter R. Learned. Transmitted. So culture, it's not something that we were born with, all right? We, um, learned, we learned our culture. Then it's something that is shared. We don't have a culture on our own. We share it with other people. It is also symbolic. I will explain this one. It is integrated. And finally, it is dynamic. So now for each one of those five components, I have here a slide for uh, each one of them. And I will tell you a little bit more um, and give you some examples. So let's start with the first one. Culture is learned. Now this is, um, this is a very important key term that I would like you to remember. It is the one here, enculturation. What do I mean by that? Look at this picture here. No one is born racist. And as you can see here on the picture, there is a baby, white baby, um, holding the hand of a black man here most probably in the tube. You probably have seen this picture, by the way, because uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a common illustration that is used. Um, and here we can see that the baby, because he's very young, did not learn how to be racist. And probably we can guess from the, 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 from the face of the mom that uh, the mom is racist or might be racist. But the baby is not because the baby have not be, uh, been taught how to be racist. So here it's what we mean by enculturation. Enculturation is the way we learn our culture, all right? It's the fact that it's the process through which we learn our culture from our surroundings. So we learn it in two main different ways. We learn it um, in an informal way, all right? So, for example, from friends or from family, okay? So this is the informal one. I will write it here. And we also learn it from a more formal way. And how do we learn our culture from a formal way? Well, the main example would be um, from schools, right? We learn it at schools. So here it's the formal one. So informal would be uh, learning the culture from friends, family. It's also, you know, from the media, for example or from movies we watch, series, okay? Um, and the formal one would be from uh, schools, different types of institutions. It could be also, by the way, uh, churches or mosques, right? Depending on your religion, but it could be also uh, religious institutions. So all cultures are learned rather than biologically inherited. That's a very important aspect here. So individuals of a culture will learn the socially appropriate way to satisfy biological, uh, biologically determined needs. For example, need to eat or need to sleep. The way we do it is uh, fundamentally cultural, but it is a biological need, okay? So culture is learned, culture is transmitted because we pass on from one generation to another, we uh, transmit culture and we inherit it from our parents, grandparents, aunt, cousins, and so on. So, enculturation, the process of learning um, the culture through, by being, uh, by our surroundings, sorry, the process of learning the culture by our surroundings and culture could be learned uh, in an informal way, so through family, friends, media, movies, and so on, and through um, <coughs> formal ways, for example, through schools or religious institutions. Now, culture is also shared. 
as you can see here in the pictures, um, the people are sharing, for instance, food, right? So, enculturation, the process through which we learn the culture by our surroundings, I'm going to repeat it so that you will remember, uh, it unifies people by providing us with common experiences. For example, uh, we have all experience attending a wedding or a funeral ceremony, right? So people in the US sometimes have trouble understanding the power of culture because of you know, the value that American culture places on the idea of the individual. But if you think about it, no individual has his or her own culture because culture is shared experience developed as a result of living as a member of a group. Um, so here, culture is shared. Groups share the same set of values ideas, perceptions, and also standards of behavior. And culture cannot exist without society, okay? An organized group, so what is a society? An organized group of people who share a territory, language, and culture. So here, you can have in some, uh, in some societies, and especially uh, in big societies, you can encounter subcultures, what we call subcultures. Um, but still, it's, there is a culture and a main culture and is shared. So remember that a um, group of individuals, they share a culture, okay, um, such as values, ideas, perceptions, and so on, and a culture cannot exist on its own, alone. Now, uh, culture is symbolic, all right? Um, so maybe before we talk about this, we should um, we should here define what symbols are. So a symbol is something, a symbol is something that stands for something else, right? Symbol is something that represents something else. So for example, um, if I draw here a cross, then you might all guess that this represents Christianism, okay? Or different, or maybe you can say Protestant or Catholic, but it's it has to do with religion. Or if I can draw, for example, this one. It depends on your culture, of course. Some of you might say that it represents peace, okay? Or if I do this, the moon, then you can say that it represents Islam. But it depends on your culture, it depends because it varies from one culture to, in, to another, but there are some universal, well now, you know, it's expanding and some symbols are understood by uh, pretty much everyone. For example, if I put the thumbs up like this, then you know that it's okay, it's fine. It, because in most cultures it does mean that, and also because of the use of emojis. All right, um, so this is a symbol. A symbol stands for something else. Now look at here, um, this picture with a lot of different drawing, and tell me inside your head, um, what does it stand for? What is the country behind those symbols? And I can all hear you saying Egypt. And yes, indeed, it is Egypt here. How do you know? Because here, of course, of uh, the pyramids, right? Here are the pyramids, the famous pyramids of Gizeh, uh, the Sphinx as well. Because of this, the Obelix. Uh, because of the mosque here, um, because of this pharaoh, um, because of the writing as well that we can see here on this artifact, the camel, and this here should represent the Red Sea that is well known for diving and um, scuba diving. So these are symbols that uh, stand for the country Egypt and without using any words you can guess that it is 
So symbols are signs, emblems, and or other things that are arbitrary, but represent something in a meaningful way. How many other symbols can you think of? I'm sure for your own country, you have some specific symbols. For example, you know, I'm French. Of course, for French people, that would be the Eiffel Tower. You know, the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Uh, or the baguette. You know, the type of bread that we eat. Um, so, these are two examples. But I'm sure you have also uh, more examples for your, for your own culture. Uh, two more, two more components of cultures to discuss. Here, culture is integrated and patent. So, what do I mean here? I mean that here we behave in a certain way because we have been enculturated too, right? We have learned that and uh, we will continue to behave in that way. So knowing the right behavior at a place or time. For example, in the classroom, you know how to behave. You know that as students, you should be quiet, you should sit, you should raise your hand to ask a question. Again, it depends on the culture and the, the country you are in, but you know, here are general rules that are applied in many different types of um, educational institutions, entities. Uh, or, for example, if you go to a wedding, uh, you know that you have to dress in a certain way. You have to wear a specific outfit that would vary depending on the culture, but you know that. So this is patent. Okay, there are some frame, um, some frames that we follow, and uh, this is part of the culture. Now, the culture is also integrated. What do I mean by that? I mean that here, this is the the picture here. Um, inside culture, there are, there are various elements. Okay, that would um, that would represent what culture is, and those elements they work well. They are integrated to one another. So it means that uh, they function together. So if something happens to here the ethnic identity, the people, then the beliefs would be affected and then the beliefs would affect the tradition and then the tradition would affect the diversity and this diversity would affect the nation and so on. So integrated because um, they all function together. They have a specific function and if one changes, then it will automatically affect the rest of the component of culture. All right? So culture is an integrated and patterned system and all aspects of a culture function as an integrated way. So it means, again, if there is something changing in one of these aspects, then automatically all the other ones would be affected. All right, so it will have some uh, repercussions on the, on the other aspects. All right, so any changes in the culture can ultimately affect um, another aspects of the culture. Okay, I hope this one is clear. Finally, uh, the last one, culture is dynamic. I used some pictures from uh, the field work I did, but I will tell you more about the field work later on. So in this, uh, in, in this one, it's just to remind you that Cultures are not static, okay? A culture is something that is very much dynamic, that is flexible, that changes over time. So culture is um, flexible and is able to adapt very uh, quickly to a situation. Of course, a culture has to adapt to different ideas that people have or technologies, for example, or activities that allow members of a group to survive and also to, you know, change their environment. So a culture must be flexible enough to allow some adjustments. And those adjustments, you know, might be, might be 
for long or short term, it depends. But you should keep in mind that cultures are dynamic systems that respond to motions and actions within and around them. So the group can initiate some changes and it's usually unconsciously, okay? People don't realize that they are changing their cultures, but it is changing. Um, or it could be affected by some external factors. Nowadays, and by the way, this, this will be the topic for the next chapter. Uh, nowadays, we live in a globalized world and globalization is affecting us. The economic market, the globalized economic market is affecting cultures around the world. Is affecting cultures in terms of, you know, clothes we wear, or movies we watch, or ideas we have, and this is, you know, this is changing cultures. So cultures are also able to absorb those changes to, to an extent, of course. Um, but you should keep in mind that cultures are not static. So all cultures are adaptable to some degree. Um, all right, now that we have discussed and defined this, I hope that the notion of culture is more, um, more tangible and uh, is better understood than at the beginning of the chapter. Now we will talk about the different cultural elements and we will talk about cultural shock. So cultural elements, you know, what are the uh, main components of culture? Maybe in your head, uh, you are answering this question by telling me, because we somehow talked about that already, uh, you can mention material culture, okay? So artifacts, for example, or maybe you can mention language as well, because language is definitely related to culture. Or you can say technology also right or cultural institution and this would be indeed um, good answers to give so some main cultural elements here we can mention cultural institution so for example I said earlier hospital okay uh, there are cultures without hospitals and by the way it's something quite recent before um, in most of the cultures, there was a person that had the um, capacity and the knowledge to heal people. And there were no specific places such as hospitals to go to when people were sick. So, you know, this could be considered, hospitals could be considered as a cultural institution. Um, a place to reproduce a certain view on um, health. Uh, of course, you can think of schools, right? Universities. These are cultural institutions. We can also think of museums because, of course, it's usually what comes to mind. Uh, museums. Or we can think even of, you know, any um, political buildings like parliament, for example. This is also somehow a cultural institution because it gives a view on the politics of the country. Then language, because language is the way we convey culture, so it is used uh, to transmit culture. Technology also would affect, uh, is part of the culture and, um, and is part of um, what people do and how they behave. And it goes with material and cultural production. So what, you know, for example, um, specific outfits, or for example, I said earlier, like uh, tools to eat, dishes, things like anything that is produced. All right, so these are the cultural elements, okay? Now let's talk a little bit about uh, cultural change.